A few days ago, Meta AI introduced their Llama 2 open source large language model. And the great thing is that it's free for research and commercial usage. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own Llama 2 chatbot in Python using Streamlit and Replicate. And without further ado, let's dive in. So this is the app that we're building today. And for a full description of this, also check out the blog, which also provides you the same information, but then in written form. So I'll provide you the link to this in the video description. So let's have a quick overview of Llama 2. It was released on July 18. It's democratizing access to the large language model. It's transparent and it has responsible use of AI as outlined in the responsible use guide. Here are five key features of Llama 2. Llama 2 outperforms other open source large language models and benchmarks for reasoning, coding proficiency, and knowledge tests. The model was also trained on almost twice the data of version 1, totaling 2 trillion tokens. And there are over 1 million new human annotations and fine-tuning for chat completions. The Llama 2 model comes in three sizes, 7 billion parameters, 13, and also 70. So all three versions are on the Replicate platform. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Llama 2 also support a larger context length of up to 4096 tokens. And as already mentioned, version 2 has a more permissive license in that it could be used for research and also for commercial use. So let's have a quick overview of the app that we'll build today. So what the user will provide are the API token, the prompt input, which will be taken to the Streamlit app and used as input. It will make an API call to replicate and the Llama 2 model will be used for generating an LLM generated response. And then this will be displayed in the Streamlit app. And this is a full view if you like to have a look. And so let's have a look at the repo. So this is the code and this is the repo. So in the readme file here, it provides you with the high level overview. So the app comes in two flavors, the standard version and also the pro version. Let's have a look at the standard version. And then if you like to have more customization, then the pro version might also work for you. But the essence are the same. Let's take a look at the requirements.txt file. And you'll see here that it will require two Python libraries, particularly Streamlit as a low-code web framework and Replicate, which hosts the large language model. Let's have a look at the app file. And you can see here that it is using up 68 lines of code. And so let's compare it with the Llama 2 chatbot deployed app here. And it is accessible from llama2.streamlit.app. And if you'd like to play around with this, you could enter your Replicate API token here. So before going and taking a deep dive into the code, let me show you how you could generate your own Replicate API token. So you can see here that I'm already logged in. Well, let me show you when I'm logged out. So this is the main page of Replicate. Go to sign in, click on it. And then you want to sign in with your GitHub account. Click on it. Because I'm already signed in to GitHub, this should work automatically. So in the dashboard, it tells me what are the recent predictions that I've made and also the time consumed for each of them. So be aware that larger model will take more seconds for the runtime and it will be more expensive. So these recent calculations were made using the 13 billion parameters. And if you're using 70 billion parameters, it will get much more expensive. So therefore, I think it's worthy to note that before doing heavy coding. But of course, the larger model will provide you with better performance. But the best way is to try them out and see which one works best. But that's the topic for another video. So click on the user icon here and then it'll give you a drop down. Go to the API token. Click on new token. Type in the name of a token name here, which could be anything. I'll type in key, click on create token, and then I'll just copy this. But it's also worthy to note that when you signed up for a replicate for the first time, you'll be provided with a trial key whereby you don't have to pay for the usage. But then after a certain amount of time, you will run out of the trial key. And therefore, you have to link your credit card information in the billing here. And now that we have the Replicate API token, let's head over back to the Streamlit app. And then let's paste in the token here. Hit on Enter. 
And then you'll see here that the authentication mechanism for the API token was successful. And now it is telling us to enter our prompt message. Let's go ahead and enter what is Python. And then you're going to see that it is generating the response and it's printing out the response token by token. Let's type in another question to try out whether it is retaining the memory of what we've asked it. Second question is, what is Trimlet? And let's ask it a third question. What questions did I ask? And there you go. They are all of the questions that we've just asked the chatbot. So let's have a look here also, the clear chat history function. If we click on it, let's see what happens. So the messages here, the history, has been deleted, all right? And so let's take a walkthrough look into the code. So you can see here that the code spans 68 lines of code, as already mentioned. So the first three lines will import the Streamlit replicate and the OS module. Then on line number six, we're going to define the page title to be Llama2 chatbot using also the Llama and the chat emojis. In the sidebar, we're using the whip statement and then we're defining the following. We're going to define the title for the app, which is displayed here using st.title. And then we're using two statements here, if and else, in order to perform the authentication mechanism for the API token. So there are two ways for you to enter the API token. The first one is you could enter the API token in the back end directly on the Streamlit community cloud in the settings and then enter the API token as the secrets. However, that approach will require you, the developer, to pay for the token usage. However, you could also give the responsibility to the user. So users will use their own API token, which I've shown you in just a few moments ago in order to perform the model calculation. And so the cost will be incurred by the user. So the first if statement here, we're going to display it to be successful if it is detected in the secrets. Otherwise, it will have the text input box asking for the replicate API token, which is this one, the box here, and then the message if it is successful, right? If not, then it will have a yellow box telling the user to enter their credentials. And then here we have a link back to the blog, this blog. And then here is the clear chat history, which is provided down below. I'll talk about that in just a moment. And so we're going to use the os.environ method together with the name of the API token here in order to save the information from the replicate AI, either coming from the secrets or coming from the text box that the user has entered. And then we're gonna save that into the environment variable. And so that will allow the replicate function, which we'll talk about forthcoming here, to use the API token in their calculation, right? So let's move on. And lines 23 to 25 here, we're creating the session state for messages. So this will keep tabs on the chat history. And then we're going to initialize that with the message of how may I assist you today in the role of an assistant. Then we're going to use the st.chat message together with the st.write in order to write messages by iterating through the messages session state. So this block will allow us to display all of the messages in the chat history, which is saved into the messages session state. And so the clear chat history button that you've seen is defined here on line number 32, 33, and 34. So we're using the callback function via the on click here in order to perform the deletion or clearing of the chat history from the session state. Lines 36 until 48 will be the function or custom function for generating the Llama2 LLM model response. And the code was refactored from the GitHub repo of the A16Z here, where they have also created a Llama2 chatbot. And they are the same team that uploaded the Llama2 model to Replicate, and it's the model that we're using in this particular tutorial. So here, the string dialog here, this is the pre-prompt, and is providing an instruction to the large language 
model that it is to be a helpful assistant and that it does not respond as user or res pretend to be user and it will only respond once as an assistant. And depending on whether the role is as a user or assistant, the if else here will handle that. And then the generated response will be using the replicate.run function. And then here we're specifying the name of the Llama 2 model that we're using. And the one that's specified here is the 13 billion parameters. As noted before, there are three different sizes of the model, 7, 13, and 70. And then the input here are the prompt and I've created the F string in order to combine the string dialog here, which is the pre-prompt and also the prompt input, which is the question coming from the prompt here, which I'll describe in just a moment that the user has entered in the text chat input here. And then afterwards, we're specifying the model parameter. And the temperature here is specified as 0.1. Top P parameter is specified as 0.9. Max length here is specified as 512. And be note here that the larger the length for the generation of the response, the more money that it will incur as well, because it would take longer to generate and much more computational resource to generate. So feel free to modify this to a lower number when you're trying out or testing this particular app. And so this function will be used later on. And I'll let you know in just a moment. Lines 50 until 54 is the user provided prompt. And so it is defining the logic for the chat input box here that we're going to see at the bottom of the chat box where the user will enter their prompt message. So you'll notice here that when I hover, it won't allow me to enter anything because the API token was not yet entered, right? And if I enter the API token, hit on enter. It validates the API token. Now the chat input box will be activated and now you could enter your message. A very cool mechanism in order to perform some validation of the token. And so here we're going to take the input message or the prompt message from the user. We're going to append it or save it to the session state messages variable. And it's going to be saved in this format. And then we're going to print out the message also by using st.chat message. And then we're going to specify the row to be user. And the message will be printed out using st.write. And the prompt message will be printed out. All right, and here comes the fun part, the generation of the LLM model response. So lines 56 until 68 will perform the generation of the model response. So here we're using an if statement to detect whether the row is an assistant or not. And if the last message is not from the assistant, it will trigger it to generate a model response. Meaning that if the last message is coming from the user, then it will know that it should generate a response and then it will become the last message. And if you ask it another question, then it means that the user will become the last message, which will trigger this again. And so this will be a revolving loop. And so the chat message here will be using st.chat message and then we're assigning the role to be assistant. And then when it is generating the response, you're going to see a spinner saying thinking, and it will be spinning as well. And for the response, we're assigning it to the response variable. And remember the custom function that we generated earlier on in lines 38 until 48. We're going to use it here, right? And then we're going to take the user prompt provided from the chat input box here. We're going to give it as an input parameter for the generate response function. And when it is generating the response, it will be creating a generator object, which is not a string, but then you need to iterate through the object as I'm showing you here. You're iterating through the object and then you're creating firstly a empty string. And then for each iteration, you will add the text chunk into the full response variable. And after that is finished, you will print it out, right? But while you're generating the token on the fly, the token will be generated one by one. It will be printed out to the placeholder here using the st.empty, right? Because here we use placeholder.markdown and then we're printing the full response as it is being generated. So you're gonna see that streaming effect similar to chat GBT. And then once it is being generated to the fullest, it will be printed out for the last time here. Okay, I'm going to show you in one moment. And then finally, we're generating the structure for the message here using the full response. And then we're saving it, appending it to the message session states. And therefore, we're able to give memory to the chatbot. Type in a question. 
and then the response is being generated. You see the spinner working, it's printing out the thanking message, and then you're gonna see that the text chunk is being printed out one by one. And so there you go. You could build this Llama 2 chatbot in 68 lines of code. And if you'd like to customize it further, you could try out version two. And this gives you the pro version. So you're gonna see that it provides the select box here allowing you to choose different versions of Llama 2. And here we have three versions, the 7, 13, and 70 billing parameter version. And then we have the slider to allow you to customize the model parameter. So let's have a look. It's Llama 2 dash pro. And so this is the pro version. So similarly, it has the API token input box here, but then you are able to select the parameter and also the Llama 2 model that are provided here. And finally, we also have the clear chat history function. And as always, we have the chat input box below here. And so the links to all of these resources, the demo app created here using Streamlit and deployed on the community cloud, the blog, the link to the article for the release, replicate platform will all be provided in the video description. And if you like a quick video on Llama 2, I'll also provide you the link to that, which was created on the Data Professor YouTube channel. And so this provides you a quick look at how you could run Llama 2 using replicate in only a few lines of code as shown here. So all of the links are in the video description. And so let me know in the comment section down below what awesome app that you're building. And so until next time, happy streamlining.